Welcome, 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 Mr. Bench's ADD experience on another Thoughtful Thursday. This one, we're going to be discussing finding the good. If you know how we do it here on Thursdays, we take a little time to reflect on what's been happening, what we've been feeling going into the weekend. You know the routine. Calm your mind, calm your nerves. Breathe in, breathe out. Do your breathing exercises. Do what you need to, to just calm down and think a little bit. Consider what's going on, what's happening, and what you can do to move forward. Because today, I have a lot of notes here. It's not as structured as I'd like it to be, but it's about finding the good. Yesterday, I spoke about negativity and how useful it can be, and your negativity in particular. And the second part of that becomes finding the good. Because there is good all around, and more importantly, there is good within you. The work is to bring it out. Not to necessarily find it outside of you, but to find it inside of you. That's basically the punchline, but I will explain what I mean. We're in a situation now in a time where it seems that everyone and everything is pushing something on us to sell, trying to get us to believe something, trying to get us to buy something, to latch on to a certain way of thinking, to ride on someone else's coattails to play into this game that's been going on. And it's not all bad, but we tend to lose ourselves in that race, right? We tend to disassociate from our true wants when everything and everyone is about pushing an agenda on top of us or pushing a feeling or trying to get us to buy, as I said. So. In all of that, we find that negativity just feels like it's overbearing. It's all around us. It's pushing us. It's it's causing us to look at things that we don't need to look at. The negativity travels very quickly. It's it's spread online. It's, It's everywhere. So how do we find the good in all this? Well, first of all, You know, there's a school of thought that says, just avert your eyes, just think on, think happy thoughts, try to make yourself happy at any cost. And this gets into escapism, something I know a lot about being that I was in the video game industry and I peddled a lot of escapist tools. I felt what I was doing was creating a better world. I still think I, that's what I was doing. But now that I look at it, I see it in a different light. Not that it's wrong, but it's just a different light. So what I've come to find out is that we can only really start looking at what's good and getting to a better place by acknowledging that there is something that's bothering us. You know, when I say look at the negative, I don't mean, hey, there's crap on the floor that makes me upset, you just acknowledge that that situation exists and you should immediately start looking for that one thing that you like, that one thing or that situation that is the good part of that. This goes into a lot of different areas and it's kind of going to sound like I'm jumping around, but it all matters and makes sense. Over time, if you start looking at your floor, your kitchen floor, let's say, use clean house as an example, you like a clean house. Anytime you find something messy that bothers you, instead of considering that, oh my gosh, they left this out, they're doing this, somebody else, that's when you start focusing on the negative. And doing that too often keeps you from finding the good. 
and it keeps you from exercising. That's an important distinction, exercising, because it does take practice, discipline, organization, and work to build the good. Like any good plant, any good seed that you plant, it's going to take work to bring it out. Just like the good inside of you, it's going to take work to bring it out. And your job isn't to oppose necessarily what's evil, but to promote what is good. Now, is there going to be friction? Yes, absolutely. Is there going to be some contention between forces? Yes, there is. Is there going to be pushback? Most likely. But that's okay. Your job in all this negativity is to find out what's good for you. My mother used to tell me when she would see me very upset and frustrated and she didn't know what the problem was, she would always just sit me down and say, what's wrong, baby? And when she started asking me what's wrong, I didn't know what to do, but she, she sat me down very calmly and kept asking me what's wrong. And I'd start explaining the bad. And she's like, okay, I hear you. What's wrong? Tell me. And this was more, and I didn't understand this until just recently, but her doing this was more than trying to just get me to quote unquote express my feelings or to get me to talk. What she was trying to do in these discussions about what's wrong, she would start moving me towards what was right within me or what I really wanted to see or how I could use the situation appropriately. Because I had, I had tons of complaints as a child. You know, I, was, I had a happy childhood, I think, but I would just complain about certain things and I got into this mode of complaining and she would break me out of that. What's wrong? Well, I can't do this, I can't do that. She'd stop, okay, I understand that's that. Would you like to watch TV? Would you like to play the piano? Would you like to... And we'll start, and she would start pushing me towards things that I could enjoy, that I, I could grow on, that I could be happy with. If I was upset that I couldn't play with my brother, she'd say, why don't you go see what your father's up to? Let's go see if he's having what he's doing outside. And I thought it was avoiding the problem for a long time, but she very concretely was looking at the problem trying to figure out what was going wrong with me and then immediately move me into a place where I was building. And that's a more complicated example that I understand that a lot of people don't. So let me jump on to my situation at Rockstar Games with table tennis, where it makes a lot more sense. And what's up, Mark? Good having you here. So I was... At Rockstar Games, I was tasked with working on table tennis. It was a time between video game systems. We were moving from one platform to the next, and we were going into the era of the Xbox 360 and the next PlayStation. And it was very, it was a, it's always a very tense time when you're changing platforms. So the company was trying to figure out what to do in the meantime, because the next, you know, Rockstar makes very large, grandiose games, and they wouldn't have a title out in time for the launch. So what they decided to do was put me on a project called Table Tennis. Now, it seemed normal now because it's been out, it was out for so long, but at the time, that sounded crazy. That sounded ludicrous to people. Why would anybody working at Rockstar Games want to be part of this table tennis project? Is it even a real project? Are they just wasting our time? That's what a lot of talk was going around the industry. Like, is this a real thing? Who's doing this? Why would you do that? And a lot of people who were in the company didn't feel like it was a good project either. Everybody, would, a lot of people were scrambling to get onto other projects or distance themselves from the table tennis project to 
find other things to do. They had no belief in it, no faith in it. And it just seemed like a big ball of negativity around the project. And I remember going outside, like when I got the news of what, what would be happening, I had to consider my options. I was thinking, do I stay at this company? You know, we've worked together pretty well so far, but this is, I didn't know what to feel about it. You know, I could have easily said that this is garbage. I need to be working on the next big project. I need to be doing X, Y, and Z, whatever. And I don't, I had conversations with my parents, but I don't know if I had this particular one. But at some point I got the sentiment that, you know what? This could be a good thing. And I started looking at what I really wanted to do, what I really wanted to accomplish. I always wanted to try new things. I wanted to be in interesting areas of creativity. And as far as Rockstar Games was concerned, this might have been the most interesting thing they've done. It wasn't large scale, it was very small. It was coming out as a launch game. It was we got, we were going to be ushering in a new technology engine. There were so many of these things that were about this project that I liked, but I couldn't see because I was my vision was clouded by just the idea that I wasn't going to like this. I didn't understand table tennis. I didn't know that or I didn't know what was going on. So I had to look back and I remember taking a, a long extended lunch break. It's like three hours, three and a half hours to get my mind right. And at one point I went outside to the courtyard, lay down in the grass and stared up at the sun. You shouldn't stare at the sun, everybody just. This is what happened at the time. And I just didn't know what to do. But I started putting my video game energy, my love of the industry into that game. I just started moving with it. And it's like echoes of my mother came back where she would keep asking me, what's really wrong? What's wrong? Not in a way to just get me to you know, commiserate with her or just to, she just not to feel sad, but kept hearing that voice. What's really wrong? It's like, well, they, they're treating me badly. They're, people are going to do whatever they do. It's okay. But what is wrong? They're just people. What is actually wrong? Well, I don't think that this is fair. It doesn't have to be fair. What's really wrong? And I kept asking myself, like, yeah, what is really wrong with this? I have opportunities here. I can grow with this. I can build on better things. I can take this crazy situation of being put on top of this project that a lot of people had no intention of, of backing, enjoying, or liking, and I could make something out of it. Within the perceived problem, lied the solution, lay the solution. I was going to be able to flex my design skills at maximum for the first time. That's one. I was going to be the lead on a project. That's two. I was going to be able to work with the small team meaning I'd be able to connect with a lot of different people and see a lot of different parts of the game that I would previously have been un unattached to. I was going to be able to introduce myself to a sports game, which I had never had the perception of doing. I was going to be able to work with some of the young and hungry people at the company because they didn't put many or any in the very, very beginning. No seasoned veterans were put on the game. So I got a level of independence that I, that is usually not seen in a video game or in a large project. I didn't consciously sit down and do this. Like I didn't consciously sit down and write all these things out. But as I got into the development of the game, as I got into the, the flow I started 
finding myself really enjoying what others would think as a difficulty. It almost reminded me of, you know, Tom Sawyer painting that fence. This is what, this is what was going to be able to get me further. This is what's going to be able to springboard me. And I don't know if you guys have ever looked at the yin yang symbol, but within the lighter portion of the symbol is a dark spot. And within the darker portion is a light spot. And these are the two converses, the two converse situation, inverses of each other. So whenever you find yourself in a negative situation, know that what's negative is telling you where the positive is, but it's not out there. It's within you. You have to really look at your situation and understand that this negativity that you're feeling is pointing you in a way that's positive, but the positivity isn't out there. It's in you. This was a big revelation to me at the time where I can't look to the outside world to give me an internal pleasure. So I had to find it within me. Now, I, I did the discussion on negativity yesterday, but I'll, I'll repeat or I'll add on some things here. When you're trying to talk to yourself and discover what's wrong, you can't avert your eyes. You have to look into the abyss. Because somewhere in that darkness, you're going to find out what's really you're going to find an energy that's hosing. You, you, obviously, you know, you're going to say to yourself, well, duh, I know what I don't like. And that, but really stop and take a listen to what you're hearing, a look at what you're seeing, how you're feeling about this thing. Really understand that. Why does that bother me? What is it about this situation that's causing me this consternation? What is it that's rubbing me the wrong way? It's not just, well, I don't like, or I shouldn't be able to, or they should blah, 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 blah. Sit down and say, okay, let me look at this, understand it. And then that knowledge should be able to point your internal compass in another direction. And the reason you have to look internally is because positivity that's superficial, that's on the outside is only going to cure the symptoms. Like, you know, people will say, well, just go to the movies and watch a movie. We'll just go, you know, have a, have a big dinner or just go, you know, buy something or get something from outside to help you out. You know, you're coughing. Hey, just take this, just take this a spoonful of syrup or whatever. And let's just get you. Those are external problems being addressed. When you go inside, you need to think, huh? And this is where you can get into some, some really interesting head work. So if you need to talk to some sort of professional, do that. It may not be a mental thing. It may be physical, social, spiritual, etc. So I'm not saying this answer is easy. The work is finding that good inside of you that you want to bring out that energy source inside of you that you want to build upon, that you want to grow. You do that. Because the outside world is going to do what the outside world does. If you find an energy that matches up with yours, it's all good. Don't, don't, you don't have to fight an energy that you find that's good. You don't have to question it. Just, hey, this is, this is what's, internally vibing with me. Let's go this way. So believe in what's working out. Throw out another example. You know, table tennis was one. We, we really enjoyed that game. Those of us who enjoyed it, we really enjoyed what we built. Some lifelong friendships were, were constructed. I have skills that I gained from that period that are unlike anything I've ever done before. And I don't know that I could have gotten to the place where I am mentally without that situation. And this isn't just me talking about me. I'll take an example from NPR. They 
NPR did a study on these women that were the cleaning staff of this hotel chain. So what they did is they they looked at all these people working in this hotel, the, the hotel staff, and they were looking at the cleaning women in particular because the cleaning women had, you know, they had a job to do. I, shouldn't, I think the article focused on women for some reason. I keep saying that, but I'm, I think it was just cleaning staff. So I'll just say cleaning staff. But I think they pointed out women for some reason. I can't remember for sure. So for right now, I'll say cleaning staff. Anyway, the cleaning staff was, you know, it's not a, it wasn't glamorous. They're basically like, hey, get in on time, be fast, go through every room. You know, I don't care what you see. I don't care what you find. I don't care what you step on. Clean everything up, get in there, punch up the room, go about your business. And one group, they did nothing with. They just, they just monitored their, their health. They ran a survey on them. They, they monitored how they were doing and let them go about their business. And another group, they told them in their orientation and their practice, like, hey, listen, you're all cleaning staff. You all do a great job. But I want you to realize that while you're cleaning, you know, you're really getting good exercise. Your arms are moving. You're getting a good walking workout. You know, you wear the walking shoes. You, you know, you get it, you get your steps in. It's good for your health. It's good for your heart. Going up and down these stairs is good for your legs, good for your lungs. You know, all the cleaning that you're doing, it's a, it's a good orderly practice. It's a meditative work, et cetera, et cetera. And they track these, these cleaning staff individuals for a while. And of course, well, not of course, but what, ter- what turned out happening is the ones that were, weren't told anything and just let to go about their business, they continued to think of it as a terrible job. They continued to think of it as a bad situation. And it, being part of a cleaning staff is not like the greatest job in the world. But my point is that they, their situation is degraded. On the other hand, the people who were encouraged to look within themselves and find good in what they were doing, to find good in the situation, like, hey, you're getting good walk, you're getting your steps in, going upstairs, you're doing your workout, you should be feeling better. Those people ended up including better habits in their life. I mean, not only, not only were they, you know, better mentally prepared for the job, they started getting healthier. They started doing better in their life. And the researchers were trying to figure out why. And because of that internal looking for the good, they started finding that they were creating a better situation for themselves by looking at what they were doing. Like, hey, man, I'm walking every day. Maybe I should take care of my feet better. You know, I'm doing all this exercise. What do people who exercise do? Hey, they drink water. I should drink more water. And they started bettering their lives. So the people who were told and encouraged in the, in the good, those people did much better. And I'm going to assume that, you know, they may have gone on to other, other better things and led a better life. Now I assume that some of those people, you know, may have just ended up getting comfortable in that job. And that's another story. But point is, given the same situation and just two different sets of ideologies or ways of thinking. One group did far better than the other. One group was able to find the good and the other group couldn't find the good and therefore they were left with the negative. And that's powerful. And I've taken that that story and similar stories like that and stories to, to my own life and have not started to look at the negative as bad, but the negative as a way to find out where the good is within myself. Looking at the negative and finding out where the good is based on the negative or using the negative to help me chart that direction, that map, right? So I could take this a lot of different ways and I'm trying to determine if I want to go into this next section, but Here's one thing I don't do anymore. I don't look for an, an 
answer. I don't know what the answers are. I don't try to solve the world's problems. I don't understand. I don't try to fix everything. I just try to do better internally and let that energy shine. Let that fire burn bright. And I've done a lot better inside because of it. I find the good within myself. And it makes me feel better, a lot better. There are things I like, and I continue to work on those things to improve them. I do not look externally for for validation. If it comes around, hey, that's great. If it doesn't, hey, that's great too. I just want to build. And one thing that I should say, you know, we've got this idea of negativity and it all being around. And if you all you see is negativity around you, your job isn't to go out, attack it and kill it. Your job is to bring the goodness out of you, whatever you think that is. Your idea of good is not going to be somebody else's idea of good. You don't want to damage yourself. You don't want to lie to yourself. You don't want to cover your eyes and pretend like nothing bad is going on. All of those are, are not cool. That is not finding the good within yourself. That is something else. No lies, no pretending, no faking, no, you know, holding back. These are all negative things to me. It's not something I try to engage in. But finding the good. And the thing is, over time, you know, and and this is, as I said, this is the work. You'll keep coming back to, yeah, but that's like this. Yeah, but they keep doing that. Yeah, but this still exists. It's okay. That negativity isn't going away. It's just going to be whatever the hell it's going to be. What's up, Johnny Tran? Congratulations on the, the art show, by the way, Johnny. So I saw the I saw the article, the news article. So the the things that people assume are, you know, <laughs> it's the woke mind virus. <laughs> nice. You know, I, I watch so many people and I, I can speak with this with a certain amount of authority because I watched so many of my family members go through it where they held on to negativity and anything that they thought was, you know, just bad. They tried to, to, you know, beat out of the world and would just fight it. And if you watch people, if you watch other people fight long enough and try to distance yourself from what they're doing. You'll see how, how damaging it can be. Not that you won't get into altercations and have contrast and be, you know, contested or whatever. But the bulk of your energy, I feel, should be spent taking what's good inside of you and trying to bring that out. Not trying to find something out there that's great, awesome and excellent. I mean, there are things that are out there that are great, awesome, and excellent, but finding what's good inside of, you know, me, you, you internally, and if it matches up with something out in the world, that's great. You know, maybe you can learn something from them. Maybe they can learn something from you. I'll do another quick example. My, I had a family member, didn't like, didn't like it all. This family member was just a problem for me. And every so often I'd end up at that family member's house and it was torture. Didn't like the way they spoke, didn't like the way they talked, didn't like interacting. I uh, thought the thought the house smelled funny. Just dealing with this family member wasn't a pleasure for me at all. And it was it terrorized me. So what I started doing is I would have my video games. I'm like, can I bring my video games over to this family member's house? 
And they're like, well, ask them. We asked, and they're like, yeah, sure, fine. Brought my video games over, tried to avoid that family, and plugged in my video game system. Did my thing. I found out that they had a certain attraction to certain video games. I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. I still have problems with you. I still, and I was a child at the time, so this is completely irrational. I have childhood, this is my childhood dislike, right? Of a certain family member. Completely irrational. Today we're on good terms, but whatever. So I found out that they enjoyed certain aspects of video games too. This became my focus point inside. Before going over to their house, I would find, I would get my magazines, I would get my games, I'd get my talking points ready. I see that family member, I'm like, hey, did you play this game? No matter what else was going on, how much I disliked the situation, like, hey, did you like this video game? They, they might say, hey, I hadn't played it. I'd tell them about it. Or they would tell me about a video game and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I read about that one in a magazine. And we found common ground. Point being, I had to find something with inside of me that I liked and bring it out. When I brought out that energy, it resonated with their energy. And to this day, anytime we meet up, like we don't talk about video games anymore, but they'll tell me, hey, my daughter started playing this game. Have you heard of it? And we still have these good conversations now because of that video game thing. I could have spent all my life fighting this family member. I could have said, you can't play my games. I actually gave some of my games to this family member. And it, it bridged a gap. Could I have fought that person for the rest of my life? Sure. What, what would that have done me? Would I have been right in my childhood mind? Yes. I would have been right to disassociate myself or call them bad names or whatever. But it just wasn't healthy. And it's not necessary. If you got a plant and it's going to grow in the soil over here, there is no need to set the soil over there on fire. Worry about what's inside. Build that up. And I don't know, I've become a lot happier and easier going just by doing that than anything else. So it's hard because people want to look for the answer that they think they want, that they, that the world has sold them, that there's this outside idea or this image in your head that exists, but that image in your head isn't reality. It's just an image in your head. The only thing you know for sure is what you enjoy inside, inside of you. So that goes back to the beginning when I was saying, within all the negativity, there is that positive thing. And within all the positivity, there's a reflection of that negative thing. So if you're surrounded by a bunch of negativity, what of that external negativity can you look at and use to figure out positivity on the inside? Take a look at the yin-yang symbol again. You'll kind of see where I'm getting at with that one. But negativity is a compass. It lets us know, you know what, this is what I vibe with. Something about that, it doesn't feel right to me. So what do I feel right about? Where am I supposed to be going? And I think that will help a lot of people out. It helped me out, helped me get through, you know, 13 years in the video game industry, which has a lot of, it had, I should say, I can't really speak to it too much now, but it had a lot of issues I felt, or I had a lot of issues with it, but it, it showed me how to be a more constructive person. It showed me how to build things. It showed me how to create enjoyment for others, literally and figuratively. So that's that. I would say in this social media era, in this era of interconnectivity, we are extremely unprepared and untrained for all of the the negativity and the way 
information moves around, the way we, we have to communicate with each other now, we're extremely unprepared for it and it's coming at us faster and faster. Now we've got AI and computer algorithms pushing it even faster. So, you know, I, I hear a lot of major tech people say, hey, I'm, I'm getting out of AI. I can't, I can't deal with this anymore. And that's fine to do that if that's fine, if that's what they want to do or don't want to do. But these are the people that are in place and they can make a difference. Like, what do they really want? Don't know. But like I said, if you can look within you, find what you can bring out, it'll resonate with some good energy out there. You can start moving towards a better future. You know, your, your points on the map, you think you want to go one place. If you've ever, if you've ever taken a map, a trip, and you needed a map to do it, you'll know that it's never in just the right way. Even with GPS now, you'll be going along the GPS and you, you see that traffic's piling up and the GPS hasn't updated yet. Now you have to find a different route. Maybe you want to stop at a gas station or a restaurant. Maybe you want to detour somewhere. Maybe you want to, maybe you want to pick up somebody, pick up a friend or just go sightseeing. The way to your destination is going to be your way. The GPS can't tell you. Your parents can't tell you. The world can't tell you. They will all try to sell you on a way. They'll all try to convince you of a certain way for whatever reason. Clout, money, economics, influence, you know, whatever. Everyone's going to try to get you to think a certain way and feel a certain way and go along your path a certain way. But you've got to see what's good within you, what's positive within you. And how do you do? What if you only enjoy fighting? Good question, Johnny. Fighting can be fun. That's fine. I mean, there is a certain enjoyment in the competition. If that's what you actually enjoy. A lot of people don't, you know, they just go home angry, but there is joy in the fight, man. I mean, I understand it. I I played a lot of competitive video games. I had a lot of, I was in sports when I was in elementary school and middle school. I played flag football. I never did the the, the actual high school football thing with the pads and everything. I stopped at flag football in, in band in middle school. It was also very competitive. I think that, I think all that's fun, but it's not an external fun, right? I'm not trying to destroy somebody that doesn't make me personally feel good. You know, I like being challenged myself. I like having a marker. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want brain damage either. So maybe I, maybe I dodged a bullet with that when getting into, getting into tackle football in in high school, that would have been an interesting path, right? I ended up in the computer club and somehow things just veered off in a certain direction. And now I am where I am. But I did have fun with flag football. Remember getting in trouble from the coach. He, he thought I was, I thought, I thought I was enjoying the game and apparently it turned into, he thought I was gloating and being a little too excited. Like when I would run a good play or caught a pass or made a touchdown or whatever, he thought I was getting a little too excited and he was like, and this was in North Florida, South Georgia. So seeing a young black kid get excited with all these, you know, down South young kids, it probably rubbed him the wrong way. And if you know what I'm getting at, that's what I'm getting at. But yeah, there was a lot of BS that went on there. And I totally, I totally relished just having fun and being competitive, but didn't go over well with a lot of the people who were watching the game. My dad loved it. They didn't love it so much. Sorry, coach. Anyway, yeah, if you like to fight, you like to fight. I mean, I can't tell you what you like and uh, you'll have a hard time telling me what I like. So I don't worry about that too much. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, as I said, yesterday I went over negativity and finding a place for that. Today was much more about from there finding the good. I want to continue doing these thoughtful sessions on Thursdays. Don't forget on Fridays, we've got Freestyle Fridays. It's just going to be about whatever. 
I want to talk about some of the Marvel and DC stuff tomorrow and what they're creating. Remember, this is all about creativity and trying to the art of building, the art of creating something from nothing, building from what's in you to affecting the world. So hope this is all making sense. I was going to start a separate outlet for the spirituality kind of stuff, but I think it all comes together in this thing called creativity. And shout out to Sugar Gamer. She posted one time that, you know, create, not complain. That hashtag, I like that one. I continue to do that. Create, not complain. So I'm always dropping bars. Thanks, Johnny, for coming through. I might go meditate right now to find the good inside me and try to bring it out. Thanks to everybody who showed up. Thanks to everybody who's checking the podcast out. Don't forget MrBinja.com. And you can find me on all the podcast streams, catching up with my YouTube post, but I'll get those up too. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.